Hello everyone, hope you're all well. So welcome to my Silver Swans ballet class today. Um, I'll just start off by explaining a little bit about Silver Swans. Silver Swans is an initiative of the Royal Academy of Dance and the ballet class is specially designed for the over 55s. Um, I tend to do a Silver Swan session about once a month in the virtual village hall. Um, so I'm a Silver Swans licensee. I was very fortunate to be part of the initial pilot of Silver Swans back in 2017. Um, and uh, yeah, it's really lovely. They're, you know, they're, it's very gentle exercise. Um, you know, we still do all the elements of a ballet class. So we'll be expecting today to be learning bar work, center work, a little bit of, um, little bit of a dance as well at the end. Um, so these are all real ballet steps, um, but it's great. Ballet's great for improving your ballet your posture, your mobility. Um, so yeah, I really hope that you enjoy the session. Today's session is suitable for absolute beginners. So don't worry if you've never done ballet before, that's absolutely fine. Um, please feel free to pop into the chat as well, whereabouts you're joining in from today. Have you done ballet before? Um, maybe you're returning back to ballet after many years. Uh, we have lots of different people who join in Silver Swan sessions and even in the virtual village hall, I know as well, we've got quite a mix of people joining us from all across the country. Some of you haven't done any ballet before. This is your first time of doing it. And for some of you, you've even danced professionally before. So I'll be explaining everything right from the start. We're going to begin with our two warm-ups. Hopefully those of you who are used to doing my sessions, you're starting to learn these warm-ups now. Just get ourselves moving. The first one, we're just going to walk around our space. If you haven't got enough space to walk around, you can always walk on the spot. Before we begin, just check that your space is clear of any obstacles. Make sure you're not going to trip over anything. Make sure your flooring's suitable. Uh, you can have some water as well, because I will give some water breaks in this, in this 45 minute session. Okay, let's get started. Right, I'll just adjust my camera. There we go. I think we can, uh, there we go. Right, let's get started. So for a warm up, like I said, actually, I'm just going to tip my camera down a little bit more. Okay, there we go. Oh, no, that's too far now. There, there we go. I never know when I'm sitting down about how far I'm going to need to uh, tip it when I'm standing up. Right, let's get started now. <laughs> This is where dining table chairs come in very handy. Um, you want something to be really nice and sturdy that won't wobble over uh, when you're dancing. Um, uh, so about, something about the height of your waist is also ideal. So this is our second warm up now and your second warm up is specifically for getting our feet moving. We're improving the strength and we're also really helping with the mobility of our feet in this exercise. And as I said, it is a warm up. So, <laughs> If like me, on this very cold morning, your toes are feeling a little bit warm, hopefully this will get them moving. So facing your ballet bar. Now, when you're holding on to your ballet bar, we know if we're standing too close because your elbows will be bent. 
If you're too far away, your elbows are straight, so we want them just to have a nice soft curve. Elbows relaxed down. That's it, because standing too far away from our bar or too close can really affect our balance. So, feet together. Let's do our warm up with our feet. So I'm taking my foot to my demi point, then to a point, demi point and down. Same with the other leg, demi point to a point, demi point and down. Same again, demi point to a point, demi point and down. So I'm not actually leaning on my toe when I point it. I'm just rippling through my feet. Then pointing your foot in front and flexing it, pointing and closing, pointing, flexing, pointing and closing. Same again, pointing, flexing, pointing and closing. One more, pointing, flexing, pointing and closing. Okay, let's go with music for our second warm up. Off we go, any point, to a point. So really crease your shoes. To a point, any point, and down. Same again. To a point, any point, and down. Really creasing your shoes. Now pointing and flexing. Point, push through your heel. Point, and close. Point, flexing. Point, and close. Point, and flex. warm-ups we're now going to go on to our bar exercises this is exactly the same as I will teach a normal silver swan session so um online sessions um we do our warm-ups into our straight away into our plies so plies is always the first exercise at the bar for dancers of any age so plie meaning to bend because everything that we're doing ballet is in French. So you're learning French as well today. So I'll just start off by teaching you the positions of the feet. So if you just stand with your feet together, keeping your heels together, now turn your toes away from each other slightly. So if you look down, it should look like about, about a right angle. Um, we don't want to overturn them out. It should feel comfortable for you. If it's feeling uncomfortable, just bring them in a little bit. So this is first position. Now keeping that same turnout in your feet, just put a space between them now. Now I want your feet to be matching again. Make sure you haven't got one foot more turned out than the other. Absolutely equal and your weight is in the center. That's second position. Come back to first for a moment. Slide one of your feet in front of the other one so that your heel of your front foot is in contact with the middle of your back foot and that is third position. And we can have third position with either foot in front. You can have it with your right foot in front, or if you swap over your feet, you can have it with your left foot in front. So, feet in first position. Now, if I point my foot to go to second, that's second position, pointing my foot to bring it in front to go into third. That's going to be the basis for our plie exercise. So back to facing your belly bar now. Like I said, plie means to bend. So we'll stand with our feet in first position. Just take a moment to think about your posture, lifting up as tall as you can. Imagine that you're growing from the middle of your head. Be careful you're not lifting your chin. It's from the middle. In fact, you can even just touch the middle of your head there. Imagine there's a string lifting, pulling you up to the ceiling. Okay, and that's where we get that lifted feeling from. So we're going to bend our knees and stretch in first position. So I'll just show you quickly. So you're making almost like a diamond shape with your legs. Heels stay on the floor. Big toes, little toes, heels, very important, they stay on the floor. So we're going to do two plies. Plie and stretch and plie and stretch. Now I'm going to point my foot to the side and go to second position like we just practiced a moment ago. Same in second, knees out to the side as you plie. And stretch, and plie, and stretch, keeping a straight back, pointing, and we'll go to third. Same in third, plie, and stretch, and plie, and stretch. Then we'll close into first position, because we've been working so much with our feet, let's take a moment with our arms. 
taking your right hand all the way up, circle it round, put it back onto the bar, and then same with your left hand, lifting it up, circling around, and putting it back onto the ballet bar, okay? So plies, it's a really lovely start to the bar work. Remember to keep your heels on the floor, and all the time we're keeping our back nice and straight and careful, you're not leaning forwards as you're doing your plie. Imagine you're balancing something on your head. Let's do our plies with music now. Okay, so feet in first. Off you go, and plie, and stretch. Plie, and stretch. Now we'll go to second position, lowering down in second. Check your weights in the middle, and plie, and stretch. Plie, and stretch. Now bringing your foot in front, into third, so in front of your other foot. Plie and stretch, heels on the floor, keep lifting up tall. Let's go back to first position now. And it's a turn of our arms, so this is called a pour de bras, what we're doing with our arms now. It means that we're moving our arms. And the other hand, one, round, and onto the bar. Okay, good. First exercise at the bar. I always love plies. I think it's just such a nice calm start to the bar work. Our next exercise is called Batman Tonju. Batman Tonju. <laughs> Sounds quite a complicated title. Um, it's just pointing and closing your feet. So for this exercise, instead of facing the bar, I'm going to have one hand on my ballet bar instead. So when you're standing with one hand on the bar, again, as it was when we were facing the bar, it's quite important how we do stand. So if you pop yourself, if you're using a chair like me, pop yourself just slightly behind your chair and then place your hand in front of you into the middle of the chair. It's surprising how much having that hand in front of you helps your balance. If, if I stand right at the side of it, you can see my elbows pulled back, it's tight in my shoulder and it's going to make it very unstable. So if I take a step back, hand in front of me, and I'm going to place my other hand onto my hip. Again, make sure your elbow's to the side and not wandering around the back, because you can see how that's twisted my shoulders already. Okay, so, back on tondus, I'm going to use my outside leg now. So my leg nearest towards the bar is called my inside leg, and my leg furthest away from the bar is called my outside leg, and that's the one that's going to do all the work. So feet in first. There's three directions we can point our feet to in ballet. To the front, to the side, and to the back. And we're going to use all these positions today. So I'm going to point my foot in front, and then I'll close it back into first position. The same leg is then going to point to the side and close it into first position. Then I'm going to the back, closing it into first position, and I'll take a demi-plie, and stretch and now we'll reverse the whole setting so I'm going to the back into first to the side closing in to the front and closing in demi plie and stretch so you, if you, I don't know if you noticed there as I was doing my back montagnes what happens is you want to keep your legs straight all the time What's happening is your foot is sliding out. It slides, but your legs stay straight. Then when it comes around to the plie, that's when we can bend our knees, okay? So feet in first position. Let's do our Batman Tondus. As we're doing the exercise, I'll give you the full French title as well for the directions that we're going in. But as far as today's lesson is concerned, we just need to know that we're going to the front, the side, and the back. So feet in first. Outside leg to the front and close to the side and close to the back and close and plie and stretch to the back and close to the side and close to the front and close demi plie. Okay, so we've done the exercise with one leg, we now need to do the exercise with the other leg. Normally in a ballet class we would turn around at this moment, 
but so you can keep following along with the video if you just swap over your chair. Okay. I'm so sorry, I realised at the end I forgot to give you the French terms for it as well, so this time I'll try and remember to give you the French words as well. So it's your other leg now, your outside leg, your leg furthest away from the bar, the one that hasn't done the exercise yet. That's what we're going to use now. Okay, so back on tendu devant, which is to the front. And closing in, back on tendu à la seconde, which is to the side. Back on tendu derrière, which is to the back. And close, demi plié. Now when we take it behind us, make sure it goes straight behind you. And close. To the side, keeping those legs nice and straight. One more to the front. And close. Demi plié. And stretch. Okay. Good. You want to move your ballet bar back now? Just going to uh, peel off a layer. If you want to have a little drink of water, I'm going to pop halfway through our bar work now. Okay. So, our next exercise is for what's called Batman fondue. Now, Batman fondue, you're probably thinking of cheese and chocolate right now, and you'll be right to, because it's all about melting. But this time, it's your knees that are melting. So, facing your valley bar with your feet in third position. So, remember how I said at the start that we can have third position with either foot in front. So I can have it with my right foot in front, or I can have third position with my left foot in front, because that's going to be important for the setting of this exercise. So feet in third, a more fondue, it feels like a demi plie, but what's going to happen is at the same time as I'm bending, my front foot is going to lift so that my little toe touches my ankle bone. And then as I put my foot down, that's when my leg stretch. So there's lots of coordination going on here. So I'm bending and lifting my leg, a little toe to touch my ankle bone, putting it down, stretching. That's called a Batman fondue devant, because it's my front foot that's lifting. So we're going to begin with two Batman fondues. Fondue one, and stretch. Fondue two, and stretch. Then from there, I'm going to take a little rise and lower back down into third so it doesn't have to be high just make sure when you're doing that rise you're not going onto your little toes keep your foot nice and square keep your balance over all of your toes equally then your leg that's in front i'm going to extend it to the front like we did for the tom views but i'm going to circle it all the way around to the back to close in at the back and we've ended with the other foot in front Ready to repeat it on the other side for your fondues. One. And stretch. Front foot, two. And stretch into a little rise. Lowering back down. Now I want to swap our feet. So take your front foot to the front. Circle it all the way around to the side. All the way around to the back. Big circle. Closing it in. Sorry, and then a little demi plie at the end. Okay, so that circling of your leg, that's actually another step called a rond de jambe à terre, which some of you, if you've done my sessions before, you might remember rond de jambes. It's basically like you're passing through all the positions that you did for your Batman tendu, like you're playing dot to dot with them. Okay, so let's have a go at music for our Batman fondues with a little bit of rond de jambe in there as well. So feet in third. Front foot and front foot, stretch, bending and stretching. Now let's take a little rise to make sure our weight's in the middle. Now we want to swap our feet, so take it to the front, circle it all the way around to the back, close it in at the back and let's just take a demi plie and stretching. Now let's repeat the fondue with the other leg. Front foot lifts and stretch. Bending and stretching. Let's rise to bring our weight back into the middle. And down. Rond de jambe. So take your leg to the front. Circle it on the floor. Big circle. Closing in at the back. Demi plie. And stretching. Okay. 
So ready for our final exercise at the bar now. This is called Grom Batmons. Grommed, big, Batmons beat. So it means big beats, basically. We're going to do this with one hand on the bar again. So if you want to adjust your chair back to where it was before. Again, just check how you're standing at the bar. Make sure you're standing behind your hand, hand slightly in front of you. Feet in first position, hand in, oh, sorry, hand on your waist, lifting up nice and tall. So for your grown back bonds, we're going to use our outside leg and our inside leg. So I'll explain the tracking of it. We're going to point our foot in front, just like we did for our tonjus, but it's going to lift a little bit, go back to a point, and closing in to first, okay? So pointing, little lift, pointing, closing into first. Have a go with your other leg as well. Pointing, lifting, pointing, closing, pointing, lifting, pointing, closing. So all the time we're keeping our legs straight like we did in the back montondus. Now I want you to think of an aeroplane. It goes along the runway and then it takes off into the air because that is the action of a Grand Batman. I'll just turn to face the side slightly so you can see. So I'm still extending my leg in front, but instead now it's going to go swish, point, close. So see how the ending has stayed the same, the point and close. Swish, point, close. Swish, point, close. Have a go with your other leg as well. Swish, point, close. Swish, point, close. Okay, so we're going to take three grand batons de vent with our outside leg. So it will go swish, point, close. Swish, point, close. One more, and point and uh, close. Then we'll take a demi plie because we've had our legs so straight, so we'll give them a chance to bend. Then repeat it with your other leg. Swish and uh, point and uh, close and a swish and a point and close one more swish and a point and close semi plie and stretch let's go with music okay outside two warm-ups, plies, tondus, and fondue and rond de jambe, and obviously we've just finished our grand bat moments as well. Pop your ballet bars away, have a little drink of water, and then we're going to come back into the centre. I'll just quickly explain to you that in the centre we're going to do a pour de bras, which is all for our arms, and then we're going to finish with a little piece. Sometimes I like to do repertoire, sometimes I like to do what's called an enchaimon. Today we're going to do an enchaimon, to a beautiful piece of music. I won't spoil it just yet, what the piece of music is, but you, you'll probably know it. Um, they play it a lot on the radio, so um, you'll probably know this piece of music. Okay, so mind your bars out the way. I'm just going to... And have a drink of water as well. I'm just going to get my drink now. So like I said at the start of my session, by all means, please write in the chat whereabouts you're joining in from today. Is this your first Silver Swan session? Um, is this your first ballet class? Um, maybe you're returning back to it after many years. Um, so yeah, by all means, put in the chat um, what you've, uh, uh, your dance experience, where you're joining in from today. Maybe you've been to go and watch a, a ballet recently. I know there's a lot of ballets that have started touring again. So um you know, let me know what you've been watching recently as well for ballets. I always like to put in some different some repertoire in these sessions. Like I said, today I'm I'm going to do an on shame on instead. Um, 
but by all means as well, I'm sure that the Virtual Village Hall can put a link in into the chat as well. You can always access back my previous sessions in the Virtual Village Hall. We've done things like Swan Lake, Romeo and Juliet, um, Sleeping Beauty, um, all sorts. All the major ballets we've done a little bit of repertoire from. So hopefully Virtual Village Hall will put it in the comments. <laughs> right. Um, okay. So let's do our pour de bras now. So pour de bras, this was a word that we came across at the bar. Um, and I said it, it was involving us moving our arms. And porter means carriage of, and your bra is your arms. So let's just stand with our feet in first. And I'm going to just teach you the main ballet arm positions. There are five positions of the arms in ballet, plus a few little extras as well. So. I'll come closer to the screen so you can see this one. So this is arms in bra bar. So bra bar is, if you think of your fingertips as being in line with the middle of your thighs, and it's an oval shape with your arms. So elbows are pointing out to the sides and hands are just nice and relaxed. They're not actually touching you, just a little bit in front. It's an oval shape. Like I said, this is called bra bar. Now, if you keep your arms the same shape and just lift them up, so they're opposite your waist. I'll just turn to face the side so you can see what I've done there. So I've just lifted my arms up so they're opposite my waist. That is first position. I'm gonna go slightly out of order now and we're going to go up to fifth position. So it's not the most logical order but it's because it's the same shape. So we're going bra bar, first position and then that's actually called fifth position there. It's just the same shape with your arms. Go, if we go back to first for a moment and open our arms out sideways, that's second position. Those are a few of the really main positions because everything else is sort of made up from them. So we have bra bar, first, second, and then we've also learned fifth position. So for this exercise as well, we're going to use a few little extra ones. We're going to use demi second. Demi second is for a moment, I want you to imagine that you've got on a tutu. Comes out from your hips and your hands will be resting just on the edge of the netting. Your tutu. Okay, so that is called demi second. And we're also going to have another position. If you take your arms to like a V shape with your palm of your hands down, we call that open fifth. So think of fifth, open fifth. Okay, so hands in bra bar. We're going to take one hand out to demi second and back in. It's a lovely slow exercise. Out and in. Now we're going to take what we call a full pour de bra, arms to first, all the way up to fifth, opening out to second and lowering down. Okay, so that's the first half of the exercise. One hand, the other hand, don't worry about which arm you use first, all the way up to the top, opening out and down. When you take your arms up to fifth position, always keep your hands slightly in front of you. We never take our hands, we definitely never take our hands behind us and not even up above your head. So we say that it's opposite your hairline. A good test of this is if you look straight forwards, if you wiggle your little fingers, if you can just see it in your peripheral vision, then that's correct. Okay, so feet in first. So we're going to go one hand out and in, the other hand out and in, arms first, two fifth, opening out, and down from here now i'm going to take one hand all the way up to open fifth and we can give it a little push then the other hand all the way up to open fifth and push then you're going to have a few counts to move anywhere in the space that you're in and you can move your arms anywhere you want to as you bring them down whatever happens by the end of the eighth count we're all going to finish with our wrists crossed and our feet in third position. Okay, so you've got a few counts there where you can travel around your space. So I've taken my hand up and push, taken my other hand up and push. Off you go walking round, 
wherever you want to go and then we'll finish off with our in our ending position okay so a lovely soft slow piece of music this is from the ballet called la bayadere um beautiful music so feet in first let's enjoy doing our paw de bras all about your arms hands in bra bar and one hand out and closing in the other hand out and in arms all the way up to the top opening out and slowly down now let's take one hand up to open fifth all the way up and let's give it a push and the other hand okay traveling anywhere in your space off you go around your room and we'll cross our wrists A beautiful piece of music that um so i wanted to give you just that little bit more freedom with that choreographer because it's going to um lead quite nicely into our uh, little on shame on that we're going to do now so um i hope that uh people recognize this piece of music it's from romeo and juliet but not the ballet version I'll just explain a little bit behind this. Um, this is actually from the film version of Romeo and Juliet. Um, when with my own Silver Swans, when we've done uh, each term, we kind of choose a different ballet. And uh, when we were on our Romeo and Juliet term, uh, we were doing things like Dance of the Nights. And I like to theme lots of other things around it. And we did a little pour de bras exercise to this piece of music, which you've probably heard a lot on the radio. And we absolutely love dancing to it. And I thought, you know what, that would be perfect for the virtual village hall today. Could you please just play a little bit of the music? So it was the beautiful Romeo and Juliet by Craig Armstrong. The balcony scene. what we tried to do was talk about some of the mime within ballet um, that particularly appears in Romeo and Juliet and we tried, tried to incorporate that within the choreography as we were doing it. So feet in first position and we're in the middle of our room, hands in bra bar to begin. We're going to take one arm up to first and take it out to a position that we call demi bra. I'll just show you demi bra first of all. So it's like it's a little bit like you're holding a tray in front of you. Okay, but what we can use it as is like a gesture out to our audience, which is what we're using it as in in the start of this exercise. So one hand first and out and hold. The other hand first and out and hold from there both hands are going to go down to brava first and up to fifth and here's our next piece of mime we're going to do the mime meaning to dance and that is just a little circle round of your hands um so if you ever see that in a ballet it does mean to dance we have these different mimes for example we'd have like marriage um baby you know but to dance i don't think that's quite as obvious but there you go you now know next time you go and watch a ballet that this means basically somebody is about to come out and dance and we open our hands out and down so let's go from the beginning one hand slowly out and the other hand so treat it's like you're welcoming your audience and brava up to fifth to dance and down let's have a go up to there with music one hand and out the other hand first and out down to brava all the way up to fifth a little circle and opening out 
two, down. Okay, good. So from there, we're going to take a step to the right. Don't worry too much about the directions. Although I do teach as a mirror image, with this dance, it wouldn't matter too much if you went the other way um, because it all works out fine in the end. Um, so stepping onto the right foot, so try and go the same way as me. Um, and stepping, because it is easier to follow along, pop your foot at the back and we'll take a little curtsy and stretch. So what I've done there is I've popped my foot onto the ball of my foot. Now, if you do find that it is not a very steady position for you, just close your feet into third and take it as a demi plie. So I've gone step and uh, curtsy. I'm going to step the other way, step, but I'm not going to curtsy on this side. Instead, I'm going to turn to face the corner and join my feet into first position. Okay. So as I do that, as I step with my right foot, I'm going to take my right hand up to fifth. And as I curtsy, it's going to fall down. And then I'm going to step the other way, join my feet into first. And my left hand is going to reach out. And there's a really long pause in the music there. And I want you to really enjoy taking your arm out and feel as though your arm is reaching out and out and out and out and out off into the distance. Okay, so we've done one hand, the other hand all the way up to dance and opening out and down stepping and a little curtsy step and reaching out we actually call that an arabesque okay so it's a very soft arm palm of your hand down and it's reaching out there okay from there as we have this pause we're going to do our next gesture and that is the mime for love. So if you put your hand onto your heart and your other hand across. Okay, so we'll come across there. Of course, one that appears a lot in Romeo and Juliet. Our hands are going to lift up and out. I'm going to walk round to my left side to finish in the middle at the back of my room. So I'm just going to walk round, walking round, walking round, walking round to feet in first. Don't worry too much, just a little like semicircle shape. Don't worry too much about how you get there. We're just wanting to finish in the middle at the back, ready for the next section. Let's go from the beginning up to there. One hand and out. The other hand first and out. Now we're taking our hands down, up to fit, to dance. And lift, stepping and curtsying, right hand, right leg, and stepping, and curtsying, and stepping and reaching that hand out, maybe you've got this extra music, and love, hands out, let's walk round to the middle of the back. to start traveling a little bit more think of a zigzag shape so i'm going to go to my right it doesn't matter if you went the other way for your zigzag we just want to make a zigzag pattern so i'm going to go here i'm going to go across to here and then i'm going to go across down to here so i'm going to think about taking three steps if i'm going to the right i'm going to use my right leg first if i'm going to the left i'm going to use my left leg first this, if you try and remember that, then it does work out best for not bending with your legs in a knot, okay? So, three walks to the right using your right leg first. Right, left, right. Now my left leg is free, ready to do three walks to the left. Left, right, left. Three walks to the right. One, two, three. Now, you've probably just noticed there that as I'm walking, when dancers walk, we walk with our feet stretched and we ripple through our feet. So if you can try and do that, that really does help with your balance a lot and also with the um, mobility through your feet. So the big toe leading really initiates the movement. So right foot lead, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, 
three and my arms at this moment i'm going to go into what i would describe as more like a free pour de bras so it's up to you what you choose to do with your arms but at this moment on the third walk i want like the way how we reached our hand out here you're going to choose which arm you reach out into that arabesque line so right foot one two you might choose to take choose to take out your right hand you might want to take out your left hand one two again reaching out to the corner one two three from there we'll close our feet together this time hand by your side we'll take a little plie and as we do let's take our hand out to demi second like we did in our pour de bras okay so we've just got that little breath that little plie and to finish off we're going to walk round back to the middle back to the middle all the way around we'll finish with our feet in third and i'm going to float my hands off low to the side so i've taken both hands palm my hand are down and it's swooping across and out okay so remember this is a big long piece of music this is just to like the piano solo at the beginning um, and then it goes into the big orchestral section so from the walks so where we zigzag let's go from there so we've done our little love walk round feet in first and i'm going one two reach out whichever arm you want one two reach you can take both hands out one two reach join your feet and little plie reach out and in walking around walking around into the middle and hands go across you okay let's go let's have a go now from the beginning feet in first Step and curtsy to the right and step and curtsy. Step into the side. Now we have this really long reach out. Enjoy reaching your hand out. Keep it going, keep it going. And love. And we'll walk round. Now we're into the zigzags. Right foot to the right. I think we've got time to um because we can say that was our practice run and now this is our performance so feet in first let's have another go at that and one hand the other hand to the right into our curtsy one and curtsy step and really enjoy this and love lifting your hands out and walking round ready to our zigzag section right foot to the right one two reaching out one two reaching out one two reach and feet together hands by 
by his side. Middle bend. I'm closing in. Let's go round into our ending. Okay, good. Let's finish off with our curtsy and, well, curtsy all back and cool down. So as we did in our dance, we can take a step to the side into a curtsy, step to the side and into a curtsy in the middle of our cool down. I'll, I'll tell you when we go into that. If we've got any gentlemen joining in today, we can go into a bow. If people who are doing a curtsy, if you do find that's an unsteady position, you can always take it with your feet in the third and a little plie. But just follow along, ready for our cool down with a little reverence in the middle of there. Let's begin with our feet together. And breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, feet into first, curtsy or bow, step, curtsy or bow, stepping, curtsy or bow. Let's just walk around the room like we did at the beginning. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. And breathing out. Okay. Well done, everybody. Good. I really hope that you've enjoyed the session today with that beautiful piece of music from Romeo and Juliet. Whenever you hear it on the radio, hopefully you've got a piece of choreography to dance along with it now. Um, so by all means, you know, pop any questions you might have about Silver Swans into the chat. If you'd like more details about my Silver Swans classes, I'll put that in as well, because I do teach on Zoom. Um, so you'd be more than welcome to join us. Um, have a lovely week, everyone. And I'll see you next month back in the Virtual Village Hall. Bye.